Hi. I thought I, I, thought I would do a couple examples of um, cumulative distribution functions. These are usually the, the tougher uh, topic in Chapter 4, just because people aren't used to thinking of uh, a cumulative function. You usually uh, think of a function as you know, the probability that x is equal to some value, not the probability you know, that you're uh, less than or equal to some value. So this capital F function is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x. So when I put a value in him for x, I'm trying to find the probability up to and including that value. So for example, um, here's a range right here. So for x is between 2 up to but not including 4, the prob probability that's been accumulated is 1 fourth. So if I take a value in, in that range, let's just say x is equal to 3, um, the statement then, capital F of 3, is the probability that the random variable x takes on a value less than or equal to 3. And if I look, you know, 3 is in this range, and the amount of probability up to and including 3 is a quarter. So same for any of these. If you take a value in the range, you're just putting in the statement, capital F of x, whatever that is, and finding the probability up to that point. So um, let's look at capital F of 4. Now 4 is actually defined in this next range, um, and so the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to 4 is um, a half. So you can see the difference here. Somewhere between 3 and 4, I actually picked up some probability, and in fact I picked it up exactly at 4 because that's where I made my jump. So um, I thought first, maybe I'll just draw a graph of this guy, of capital F, uh, and then we'll go from capital F and determine its probability mass function. So I want to keep that picture in there. Here is, let me draw an axis here. Uh, eventually, capital F, it'll pick up all the probability and it will end at 1. So um, x's go from 2 to 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 2, 3. It picks up probability at 2, 4, 5, and 7. Um, this is the axis, x-axis, and this is capital F of x. And let me see, we'll put in here point one, two, three, four, five, so 50%, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 1, all the probability. Okay, so this is capital F of X, the probability axis. So I'm going to change colors here um, when I draw my graph. So let's go ahead and draw uh, capital F of X. So for X is less than 2, I don't have any probability at all. So for example, if you took the value 1, um, the probability that x is less than or equal to 1, because 1 is in this range, is 0. I have not picked up any probability up, into the, up until the left of 2. So let me go ahead and draw what that looks like. So any value here for x less than 2, there's no probability. And even at 2, um, I don't actually get probability till I hit the value. So coming from the left, I have not picked up any probability. Now at 2, you can see I've made a jump from 0 to a quarter. But I don't actually take on that value till I hit 2. So at 2, um, the value actually defined at a quarter because that's how much mass I have there at 2. Going from, um, right, from the left of 2 to the right of 2, I just picked up some probability there at a fourth. So this is 0.25. And between um, 2 and 4, I don't pick up any more probability. So I have a closed circle. And up until 4, I'm just riding along that line. Any value in there, the probability, for example, less than or equal to 3 is a quarter because I haven't picked up any more mass. So at 4, you can see I made a jump then to a half. So at 4, we jump up here to a half. And nothing changes until 5. So I have uh, just a horizontal line till 5. Uh, open circle at 5 because I don't pick up mass until I actually hit 5, and then I can make my jump. Um, okay, so from 4 to 5, um, I was at a half. From 5 to 7, I go up to 0.8. So I make a jump here up to 0.8 between 5 and 7. 
open circle at seven, and then at seven I get my last bit of probability. I jump from, um, at seven I jump up to one, so I'm at point eight and I jump up to one. So I make a jump of point two, right, and there, there it is. So, I mean, interesting about capital F of X, uh, the right-hand limit will eventually be one, right? I mean, eventually you're going to pick up all your probability as you go along X. As X gets bigger and bigger and bigger, you're accumulating more mass till eventually you hit it all. Um, capital F is always non-decreasing, meaning it's increasing, but we say non-decreasing because sometimes it's just flat. So it's always rising or staying flat. Um, and the left-hand limit, it's going to negative infinity. So this is what a typical um, capital F graph looks like. And you can see here where it's making the jumps. Um, that's where uh, my mass function is defined. So let's go to um, let's go to green. So right here at two, this is going to be my mass function. At two, I picked up a quarter probability. At four, I picked up a quarter. Um, at five, let me see, we picked up 0.3. And at 7, we picked up 0.2. So the probability mass function is written like this. And the mass, hey, this is like a movie, right, with alternate endings. Uh, I realized, well, I didn't. Evan, uh, from our class right now, he sent me an email and he said, I wrote the probability mass function backwards. That's exactly where I was at. And uh, so this is the first time I've ever cut into a video, and I'm adding a new ending to it. So at this point, I was creating the probability mass function. So let me do that correctly this time, and maybe it would help to show the capital F up there. So P of X, and this is just the probability that X is equal to little x. And in this case, the only non-zero probabilities come at 2, where it made the jump, 4, 5, and 7. So I have probability at 2, 4, 5, and 7. And so we could use our picture, or we could use the CDF to come up with the values. Um, right here, at 2, I made a jump from 0 to a quarter. So the probability x is 2 is a quarter. And then from two, um, sorry, from at four right here, um, we jumped at four from a quarter to a half. And you can see over here on the graph, we were at a quarter and jumped up to a half. So we also have half probability there. Um, right here at five, we jumped from a half to 0.8. So we jumped by 0.3. And finally at seven, um, we went from 0.8 to 1, so we made a jump of 0.2. And as you can see, this is a legal probability mass function. If you sum it, it sums to 1. And, uh, you know, you could use this now if you wanted to find expected value. Uh, it would just be the sum over the x's of p of x times x. And so x times p of x, you could do that. But once you have the mass function, you know exactly at what x's uh, that function has mass or probability. So I hope this helps and I hope the new ending works. I'll try to make another MP4 file out of this, which is not working too well today. Um, it's a good thing I'm not too cranky, right? I actually am. Okay, bye.